Hey there, it's me, top four in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know, I know, I'm kind of him, I'm him. Oh, you don't believe me? Oh, well, look at speedrun.com, my name's there, I'm him, that's proof, there's the receipts, chief. Now, to be frank, I'm... I'm not really a speedrunner. I've tried to speedrun a couple of games before and it 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 didn't go good. It oh. It was bad. So bad to the point where I just was looking for any category to be the top 5 in anything. And that's when my eyes got drawn to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now Mario Kart 8 is not exactly an unran game. It's actually at any given moment one of the more popular games on the website. So how did me, a bum, end up top 4 in the world? Well, let's just say it wasn't supposed to come out like this. This is a story of how I got this accidental legendary run. So let's get the elephant of the room out the way. I am not top four in the big categories. I chose a smaller, lesser known category that few dare to touch due to its tough to handle speed and extreme RNG dependency. On top of the fact that the hardest track of all time in Wii Rainbow Road is the one that caps it all off. And that's the final DLC installments, 200cc with items on. And it all started in Athens Dash. To give an idea of how unexpected this run was, I wasn't even streaming. I was offline practicing and recording myself just to try and get the routes down. There's not too many shortcuts in this map. You can hop over that little grass section there where you gotta be careful. And I'm just kinda trying to take the inner line as much as possible and get my boost off of drifts. And as you can see, I hold on to my coin while I'm getting item boxes, and that guarantees the next item will be a defensive one. Or at least something that's not a coin. So outside of purely just getting items, a lot of the RNG actually comes on when you get hit by an item. So over here, we got hit by the blue shell while I was in the glider, which actually allows us to keep forward momentum. And luckily, I just didn't fall off the map. As you can see, holding on to that coin was definitely worth it, because it helped us get a banana to protect us from a red shell. And we didn't hit any pillars which solidified our first map. My bad. I thought it was a lot worse. Now the next map is an absolute classic, Daisy Cruiser. So most people, especially in the time trials, they take the right route because it is a little bit shorter, but I find it easier to get a good line going the left route. Right there, I tried to join the Shy Guy Yoshi and Toad for dinner, but it's okay because we might have another chance later. How did I do that? And then I also missed all the item boxes all the item boxes. I am very bent that I missed the item boxes because items are key in this speedrun. You need to defend yourself from the onslaught of shells that the CPUs throw at you, and you have to do that with whatever items are in Jesus decides to hand your way. So when I miss an item box, it, it hurts, it hurts. So the really bad thing about bloopers is that it actually makes you lose traction, and it makes drifting and taking turns just a little bit harder. As you can see, it didn't really affect us there because it was for the most part straight. And now the tables are moving and we hit a table again. Daisy, we need to fix this boat. It is a safety hazard. It's an OSHA hazard that the tables can move like this. I, I, I don't feel like these guys are having a good time eating. They're probably throwing up all their food at the end of the race. But despite all that, we didn't get hit by an item the entire time, luckily. And that capped off a decent Daisy Cruiser. Up next is Wee Moon View Highway. And this is actually one of my favorite maps of all time. So if you take that top route, you gotta be careful of that truck that will always be there on the first lap. Boost layout. This map can have different layouts for the boost, and I was pretty lucky here and actually got my favorite one. And this is just why it's so fun, especially on 200cc to play this map. Look at the distance between me and second place. So if I was going the fastest possible, I would have to dodge that pink car there, but instead I had to dodge the yellow no. one and failed miserably, and then got shocked. whoop de doo for fucking me, man. No more shit at me. Throw 20 blue shells. And just like that, Moonview Highway with a 10 second loss. It's really looking bad for this run. Well, it's up to squeaky clean sprint. I don't think my squeaky clean sprint was squeaky clean on my 35-45 run. So, let's try and get it squeaky clean this time. Although this category is shorter than the others, that actually kind of made things a little bit tougher. Since this category is so much smaller, it's a lot easier to grind out and perfect versus the much larger categories in the 48 or 96. And that just makes getting top five that much harder. But I'm just gonna take a moment to sit back and appreciate Squeaky Clean Sprint. You can tell the developers really had fun making this map because it has what I think is some of the most character out of any Mario Kart 8 Deluxe original maps. I mean, look at this. 
There's a whole toilet in the ending section. It's it's just so goofy and I love it. I would say there's two big tips for a squeaky clean sprint, and that's make sure you lay the pipe well. You gotta have a real good pipe section. Those little screws, if you're screwing in the pipe, it can screw up your pipe. You don't you can't screw up the pipe. You have to get a solid, solid pipe laid. And second suggestion would be to try and aim a little bit to the right on the boost panel before the toilet on the first lap and you can use that to get to this upper route which is a little bit quicker but i miss in the first lap and luckily on the second lap i hit it because the toilet was clogged and shooting up a bunch of toilet water so um yikes and for reference this is what it looks like when you actually know what you're doing this is the current world record for time trials no fuck oh, we just barely made it fuck it is possible to miss the upper route even when the toilet is up i don't know how it happens don't ask me it is very tilting when it does happen though next up is los angeles laps and this is one of the maps that took me a lot of practice during my time trial sessions and just like athens dash it is another tour map so each lap is going to be different so you can see i actually didn't take any of the boost panels there i just took it that way because it was easier and for a beginner it would probably be easier for you too look at how cute the 2d sprites in this section are Look at him. It may look bad that we got double bodied by two shells here, but it's actually a blessing because we got hit by the red shell first. It has a little bit shorter of a stun time than the blue shell. So because we got hit by the red shell first, we had invincibility, which is God's grace from the Mario Kart gods. And the blue shell didn't affect us at all. As you can see, I aimed for the double item box and it actually worked out there because if we got a single, it was going to be about a 70% chance that we get a coin. Sorry, we for item. But unfortunately, it didn't end up working for too long because another red shell was thrown. Fuck, man. Watching the lines I take, I'm going out of my way to get coins. And that's because coins actually make you faster. They make a tangible difference in your speed. And if you're doing a speed run, I really suggest you get the coins. Being down 10 seconds, 5 races into the run, it's really looking bad. But don't worry, there's a lot of time to be saved and a lot of luck to be had. You're going to see a lot of different approaches to each item box and it kind of just depends on the order of the items I have. So right now I have a coin in that first slot and I'm actually going to hold on to it for as long as I can because if a boo comes around and steals my first item, it steals something not valuable. It steals a coin. Like, fuck a coin, bro. But if I already use that coin, chain it to the next item box, and now have that shell, chances are my second item is going to be a coin. The boo is going to steal the shell at the perfect time. I'm going to get hit, and I'm going to cry. That is, of course, unless you're approaching a double item box in which you want to reroll your items if you don't like what you have. And we got pretty lucky here. We got a shell shocker, and this is going to save us from blue shell coming right up. Those shy guys are dancing their heart out. So in case you don't know the lore of this map, those shy guys will be dancing and mining forever. The sun does not go down and they're not allowed to stop working until the sun goes down. Kind of sad, kind of morbid, but at least they're cute while doing it. I think that was about as good a Sunset Wilds as I can get in my current, my current skill level. So let's see if I can keep it up and get a really good Koopa Cape. Honestly, growing up, this was my favorite map on the Wii. The music's great, and I loved going in the little pipe on the bottom and getting boosted by the water. There is a risky route you can take on Koopa Cape that involves hopping over the grass if you can charge up a drift, but I failed it. And for the rest of this run, I'm not gonna attempt it because it's so much more of a time loss than just using the water to your advantage. Just like squeaky clean sprint, we have to have a solid pipe. We have to lay that pipe well. Now Nintendo, they fucked up the pipe. They screwed the pipe. They destroyed the pipe. I don't know why they did it, but they just made the pipe boring. The performance of the pipe, is just not there. Their pipe game is weak. L pipe. And once again, we have another tour map. There's just so many tour maps in this speed run because I think the developers were running out of ideas. <laughs> Vancouver Velocity, not much to say about this map. Drive well. There's a cute little ice rink part. You want to kind of aim your cart for the right place there while the shy guys are doing backflips over you. And like I said, there's a lot of RNG involved in this run. So let me play by play break this down for you. There's a blue shell coming for me. I can't see shit. And somebody placed a banana directly in the middle of the road. But then I had a brain bust. By hitting the banana, Daisy remained invincible in just enough time for the blue shell to not affect me at all. Honestly, it, it was Giga Brain, five head strats. I saw it coming, 
totally, it was all planned out. I bet. Oh my god. Honestly, I didn't know that banana was there. The fucking squid ink was blocking my view. Let's go. <laughs> and let's get into another rule in this speed run. So in order to do the item runs, you have to have the CPU on hardest difficulty. But look at Waluigi here. Don't show me Waluigi. Oh, he fucking really tried. He tried hard. He was trying to snipe me. He missed because I'm a god. And for the rest of the race, I was basically front running the whole time. I hate to say this, but Romavanti is just one of those maps you gotta grind out. There's no real shortcuts, and look at the minimap. That shit is confusing. It looks like when my dog stole my spaghetti when I wasn't looking and then threw it up on the floor 30 minutes later. That's kind of the vibes the map gives me. Nice. Coming up next is the Run Destroyer. DK Mountain. One of my favorite maps from my original Mario Kart game in Double Dash, it destroys me almost every time I attempted this run. There is one key shortcut that I believe is essential, and it's this gap jump right here. On 200cc, it's simple enough to where if you slow down, line yourself up, and jump over it, you can make it. And the rest of the map, eh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. You have this spot right here where Daisy got absolutely destroyed in the Mario Kart Wii version of the game. Even on my second lap, I hit a banana, but because 200cc is so fast, we can still make that gap jump. But there are many a times where I missed completely and it just, it just ruins the run. This map is a great filter on which runs are good or not. But because I hit that shortcut all three laps, it was a great DK oh. Mountain. And that's kind of when I had the feeling that this run was something special. That's the save I was looking for. Look at Nintendo hitting us back to back with some classics. Daisy Circuit, and this is my circuit because I'm playing as Daisy. And then here's another thing with the hard CPUs. They like screen watch you and they try and get in front of you just before item boxes, especially the first one. Fuck you, PD Piranha. Those fuckers always try to steal my shit. They fucking screen watch you, man. They're sniping me. But okay, back to Daisy Circuit. It's a good map. It's nothing special. I would say there's no cool shortcuts like there was in DK Mountain. There is one you can't take, but without a mushroom, it's just really not worth it. <laughs> I dodged that shit on accident. The real point that I want to emphasize when it comes to this map is you just chain your drifts. If you keep chaining drifts, you get the blue drift, you get the orange drift, rarely with the purple drift, maybe on the hairpin, and then you take this little inner sidewalk path right before the finish line, do that three times, and you have a good, solid daisy circuit. Next up, Piranha Plant Cove. So if you thought Daisy Circuit was a snoozer, this one is the complete opposite. There is a lot of corners you can cut and it has a lot to do with the underwater physics of this map. So in the beginning, there's this big cut you can take and you kind of want to aim for that orangish reddish ball, bounce off of it and it'll actually take you over the rough patch. I missed it, not too bad of a time loss and we keep moving forward. Not even 20 seconds later, there's another shortcut you can take we're gonna angle yourself backwards and to the right and just cut that corner as much as you can. And you can see I get a pretty fat time save by doing so. And then you have this section here where you're just chaining tricks and mini turbos back to back to back. I love it, it's one of my favorite parts of this map. And soon afterwards, we have to dodge these thwomps. Do not get hit by the thwomps, it is, it is a run killer. And luckily, I don't. And the rest of the map is pretty straightforward. You can skip this section right before the finish line with a nicely timed hop and we're moving forward, feeling good. Mm. Did you think the tour maps were done? Mm -mm -mm. Nintendo just whips another one. He just whips it on it. Whips it out on the table for you guys. One more Madrid Drive. This one has, I think, the best music of all the tour maps, especially the stadium part. We're gonna hear it on lap three. We're gonna soak it in, baby. We're gonna soak it in. Starting off, there's this section with this Wiggler bus thing and these toads are having a nice brunch. We're just gonna take the inner path. On lap two, we're gonna pass by this again. And there is a gap you can take for a small time save. And I think it's a little bit too risky, especially in a longer run like this, because if you miss it, it's, it feels bad. 
Unfortunately, we can't dodge all the blue shells and we get hit right there and a pretty unfortunate spot too because we were in the glider. And we're just getting hit back to back with shit. A boo followed by a shock right after the blue shell stun, it's bad. And even though I have no items, I still don't get the double item box, which would have gotten me a defensive item because now that we're small, whipping out that far to get a double item box would have been a huge loss. But now we get to pass by these Goombas crossing the street outside of the crosswalk. The crosswalk is right there, guys. Shh. Shh. Do you hear that? Mm, the ambience. But why are the Goombas just in big ass shoes? Up next is Rosalina's Ice World, and I always felt decently confident on this map. There's a lot of slippery road, there's this huge like turning section in the beginning, and then there's some spots where you can get some boost panels if you take the outer path. But for some reason, on this run, I just, I, I just fucked Rosalina Ice World terribly. Who placed that banana there? Oh, that really fucked this run. I need names. That fucking banana, man. But I didn't let that deter me, and I was already this far in with this much of a time save. I had to see it through, baby. That, this run is, might be fucking. I think it's Joker, guys. It's not Jover, it still can be an improvement, but I was hoping to get a big time save there. Following that huge L of Rosalina's Ice World is SNES Bowser Castle 3, a classic map. And remember how I said they try and steal your items? Fuck you, Waluigi. I swear to God, man. You have the most fucking micro penis of all time. All my homies do not fuck with Waluigi. Outside of that instance, I think SNES Bowser Castle 3 is just one of those really fun maps to play. I feel like I'm just zooming through everything. There's no crazy shortcuts to take, but it's just still so fun. Until you're kidding. Bro, what timing is that? I swear. What was that, D? Oh, fuck, it's Jover, bro. This run's dead. Like I said, RNG, Jesus, it just needs to be on your side. And unfortunately, it just was not during the end of this run. I was a little bit better, man. Okay, <clears throat> let's pray we just get insane luck. Insane luck here. Come on. We Rainbow Road, the least forgiving map. I think in Mario Kart history, and of course, what better way to do it than to end it all right here? Not like that, not like that. Okay, YouTube, I didn't mean it like that. Okay, I promise. Every run prior to this one, I fucked up so bad on Wii Rainbow Road. There's a couple of skips you can do. You can jump over the holes in the half pipe section. You can jump over this gap here. If you're not drifting the right way after the jump, good fucking luck, buddy. And then there's this one little jump here where if you cut the corner a little bit, you'd end up not taking the jump at all. It saves you about maybe half a second. But a lot of that was just a little too risky for me, especially this far into such a good run. So I played it safe. And even then. No! It still wasn't perfect. I wish I could tell you that I clutched up and just showed how I was the absolute best in Mario Kart, but the truth of the matter is I am not. I'm just a guy who does YouTube for fun. And somehow, some way, despite the ups and the downs for this entire run, my final time was enough to get me fourth place in the world. Fourth place out of five, baby. Not last. We're not last. Woohoo! Yippee! Still top five. Still top. Do, do, do you feel scammed? Oh, baby. <laughs> I scammed the fuck out of you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, fellas. It's still, it was finally a time that I was proud of. And it got me in not last place. And that was my goal. If I was going to be top five, ain't no one going to be top five out of five. Let's, come on. Come on. Come on. 
if you feel scammed tell me down below and if not um give it a like and subscribe and just can continue continue watching my videos i don't scam you too hard like this i still think i tried really hard for this i mean if i go to a party i can <laughs> be like sup girl you know kind of top four in the world in mario kart here's the stats here's the proof but um i taught you how to do it and you can try and beat me if you do let me know let me know down below bye see you later bye bye now subscribe bye bye